Hello YouTube, this is Jay, and this is going to be part 7 in my series of discussions of how to build a no water change tank. So, in all of my previous videos I've been focused on producing output. So basically your tank has to have a balance, and the input is always the same for a fish tank, it is the food. It's the fish food that you are putting in, that's the input, and you have to produce some um, way of output, and that is usually doing water changes. So out goes a dirty water. And what I've been discussing is producing alternate ways of producing output, like using plants or denitrification. But since I've discussed so much about output, I think it's time to discuss the input. And I think um, the hobby in general doesn't discuss this input very much, and I think it's very important. So basically, if you have two tanks with exactly the same parameters, and the only difference is the food, which tank would be easier to achieve in a water change tank? Obviously this one. This one has vastly uh, less food going in, so you have to worry about much less in terms of producing output, so that you can achieve a balance of input and output. For this tank, because you have so much going in, it'll be much more difficult to match that in terms of a certain output, whether it be plants, denitrification, or water changes. So, that is why different tanks are um, affected differently in terms of filtration and water change. For example, shrimp tanks and planted aquariums. It is not very uncommon for these tanks to be run no water change style. It's very common, it's a well-known method, like some shrimp breeders just never do water changes and it, they think that's very good. Because shrimp tanks, shrimp just don't eat a whole lot, they eat very little so you're feeding it so little that it's not that difficult to produce some sort of output. Planted tanks, the main focus is the plants and you have a very small fish load compared to the tank, to the size of the tank so it is very easy to accomplish in a water change tank, whereas on the other side of side of the spectrum where you have big fish or big animals like arowanas or turtles it's pretty much very very rare I never seen anyone do a no water change arowana tank I've never seen anyone aside from me doing a no water change turtle tank so these things are much more difficult to achieve in a water change tank because they require a heavy feeding so Basically, what we should be thinking about more when we're trying to achieve a no water change tank is optimizing the feeding. So basically, you don't want to feed too little and you don't want to feed too much. Everybody understands that. But a lot of people, a lot of hobbyists, like the enjoyment of the hobby is feeding your fish. That's part of the, that's part of the hobby. So people are like over here in terms of their feed. They are towards the upper spectrum of the middle range where it is um, optimal. What what we should be discussing more is where is this point right here where we are feeding the minimum amount but it is just enough to keep your fish healthy and happy. Where is that point? Like we should be discussing that and we should be trying to get there. So that's point one is we should just try to reduce feeding and that will make it vastly easier to accomplish in a water change tank. And point two is how to build an ecosystem. And uh, basically if you build a proper ecosystem, this results in reduced heating. And why is that? So let's say you just have a monotonous tank. You have just turtles in there and nothing else. No other organisms. And you're feeding this amount of food. This is the food going in. And what happens to that food is the turtles won't eat 100% of it. If you look at turtles eat or any fish eat, they gulp down the food and then they mince it around and then they spit out a little bit and some of it is lost. So most of the food is eaten by the turtle but some amount is just left in the tank, it drops to the bottom and that food gets eaten up by bacteria and it's just wasted. And that is how a typical uh, uh, homogenous tank works. Whereas, let's say you have built some sort of an ecosystem. An ecosystem where you have turtles and shrimp and plants and algae. So you have these four main classes of organisms. You can make it more, much more complex than this, but let's just say you built a very simple ecosystem like this. So what happens here? 
So the same thing happens with the bulk of the food. It goes to the turtles. And a small amount of food that was wasted in terms of the bacteria, it gets eaten mostly by the shrimp. And there's a small amount that also goes to the bacteria, but let's just say, let's just ignore that for now. And what happens here is this shrimp has salvaged this food. And what happens to the shrimp? The shrimp live on, and sometimes they will get eaten by the turtles. So you have a loop going on here. And what happens to algae? So basically you have sunlight coming in, and these both of these animals are going to produce waste. And with the energy of sunlight, or whatever light source that you have, this waste will be converted into plant and algae biomass. And what, what happens to these plants? So the turtles can also eat the plants, and the shrimp will eat the algae. So you have these multiple loops going on. So what does this achieve in total? How does this help me achieve a no water change tank? Other than the fact that the plants and algae are helping filter the water. What's the shrimp for it? Just cycling within. So what this does is because the sh turtles, the main guys that you're trying to feed, they have shrimp to eat. They have plants to eat. So what this does is effectively reduces my need for feed. I can feed my turtles a lot less if I have an ecosystem going. So in my no water change turtle tank, a point that I didn't really discuss much is how little I feed my turtles. I feed them very little compared to what other turtle breeders feed. And it's, per it's perfectly fine because I have built an ecosystem where I have alternate sources of food that are produced within the system. So that reduces feeding, makes it much more easier to accomplish a no water change tank. And also what this does now, I have already discussed that trimming the plants produces an output, but the shrimp breed. So I will occasionally catch some shrimp, and the shrimp biomass also is an output. So if you have a complex ecosystem like this, you can have alternate ways of producing output in terms of the other organisms that are uh, making up that ecosystem. So that concludes part 7 of my No Water Change series. Basically, it's about we should be thinking more about how to reduce the feeding and how building an ecosystem by producing these loops reduces the need for feeding. So just by building some sort of an ecosystem, you can drastically reduce your feeding and make it drastically easier to accomplish a no water change tank. So thanks for watching guys. That was part seven. Maybe there'll be a part eight. I don't know. I don't have anything planned. Uh, thanks for watching.